Hi folks, this video is about OpenWebRx, which is a web-based SDR receiver. So it's not only for ham radio operators, although generally it is often used to tune into uh, ham radio frequencies. The SDR receiver itself is just a little dongle and effectively it will receive a wide range of radio frequencies. So from FM broadcast radio, ham radio, anything that's any of the accepted digital ham modes like DMR, D-Star, that type of thing. So you could be sitting anywhere in the world with a web browser, say you in London in the UK. You could visit a web page for any of these open web RX sites. Say for example, mine is in South Africa in Cape Town. You'd log into that web page and you could start tuning into whatever I'd set this thing up for. And I will finish off the video by going through the interface on my side a little bit just to give you an idea of how to navigate the interface and what you can do with it. But just to kick off, this is the OpenWebRx website. It is an open source product and the website is www.openwebrx.de. That's a German site. You'll see that the two things of really of interest on this page is well, if you're going to install it yourself, all you really need is a SDR dongle and, and a suitable antenna just to receive the signals more strongly. I mean, you can use a coat hanger or a piece of wire, but it's not going to work that well. And you'll see you can install it on Ubuntu, Debian, there's Docker images. I've got mine installed on Raspberry Pi, and because you can access the source code as well. Mine is running quite well on the Raspberry Pi. I just installed it as is using the image booted it up and there was about three or four little config files that I had to change. Just the bookmarks for what frequencies are applicable just to make it easier for you to find because you can scan up and down those bands that, that have been provided. Bearing in mind the SDR dongles are not very powerful or wideband receivers. So, you know, the fact that I've got about four bands active, I can only go up to a certain width and it's running my Raspberry Pi fairly heavily. So you're not going to get the full spectrum. It's only really what the person has set up for you to look at. The other thing of interest then really is the receiver book link here. And why that's of interest is it shows you really all the different open web RX sites that are available around the world. So if you go to this one, for example, in Poland, you're going to be picking up whatever radio signals are being broadcast or transmitted in, the, in that area. You see they're including here public two-way radio, ham radio, broadcast services. So it's not the same as internet radio because internet radio is people that are streaming over the internet specifically. These are you literally tuning into and you can control the receiver at the remote station and it can handle a couple of people simultaneously. So you can see there's a good many pages here and there's Germany, there's, you know, all over the place. You've just got to sort of browse around. I think Australia, it's quite prolific actually in Europe, I see. So I think without further ado, let's go and have a look at my own open web RX. I'll be putting links to all of these below the video anyway. So this is what the page is going to look like if you land on it. Um, you'll see there is my call sign and location and a grid location and one or two other things over there. There's the frequency along the top. I can probably just zoom out a bit. This is one of the bands at the moment. And you will change the bands. You can see it's set at the moment to this frequency, 144.800 megahertz. That is our APRS frequency. Now, the thing that's really of interest with OpenWebRx is it decodes various of these digital signals. So I have done a video on APRS before, but APRS is essentially location-based broadcasting on a ham radio frequency. So it's transmitting things like speed, location, bearing, it's used for search and rescue and various other things, tracking trucks, that sort of thing. But you'll see down here, it is actually decoding the signal to, to actually show you the information. Yeah, the call sign, the time, and whatever text or data is being transmitted. So you'll see sometimes there's weather stations. These are cars moving around at the moment in my area. So on the bottom right over here, this is where that drop down menu there is the bands that, that I could make available at the moment. I'll get to the others just now. At the moment, we are on the two meter VHF frequency and I've, it's the digital sort of 
segment of the band, if you want to put it that way. And I've put a couple of bookmarks here. You'll see this is marked at the moment for APRS. You can click on it and it'll then immediately set, the way I've set the bookmark up is that it is set up for the frequency and that it's a digital packet radio service and it'll be decoding the, the signal to provide this information over here. You can see these are all bursts and transmissions at the moment. But then there are other ones here. Now I can't remember what WSPR was to be honest. There is, for example, this is a single sideband simplex frequency that the ham radio guys use. So if anybody's talking on it, you'll actually see the waterfall signal moving down here, like you're seeing over here for the APRS. So that's the other nice thing with Open Web RX. You can see across a fair amount of the spectrum to quickly get an idea if there are any signals that are being transmitted at the moment. These are digital, oh, there's JS8 call, and not many people are using JS8 call on VHF, so you're not seeing anything, but if you clicked on there, you'll see it would also be decoding that for you into plain, easy to read messages over here, if there was any JS8 call being transmitted at the moment. There was something that is being transmitted here, but I don't think that's any voice signal. If you click there, you can see, you can set it to there, the other thing, if you're not hearing anything, just remember down here is the volume. So you'd want to adjust the volume up a little bit. There you can hear something. And there's also a squelch over here that you can adjust. Let me just turn that volume down a little bit for the moment. At the top, if you're going to be working sort of in manual mode, you can just click around wherever you see something, like I'm showing at the moment. And if you use your mouse scroll wheel, you can zoom in a little bit to get a little bit more closer to the frequency. Now what you're going to notice here is it is still set to upper sideband over here, the mode. You could maybe make that say FM. We're generally an FM band at the moment and you'll see it's adjusted to the bandwidth of FM. You can adjust these manually though by moving them in and out either side of the center frequency if you find that they are too narrow or too broad. But the defaults will apply if you set the signal here. So typically that's your FM signal. That's your wide FM, which is a broadcast signal. You can see how wide it is automatically. That's AM, lower sideband, upper sideband. That was for Morse code. That is for DMR radio, digital mode. D-Star, there's also a NXDN digital mode. That is Yesu Fusion. So that digital signal will also be decoded. There's free DV and then DRM. At the moment, we're on digital. On, on the digital modes, there's actually a whole bunch of different further sub-modes you can choose. So things like FD8 is a popular digital mode, uh, JS8 call, uh, POCSAC. There's, there's a couple of these as well you can drop down to, to, to try out. If you're not decoding, you can't understand the signal. So... That was the VHF digital. Let me just go to broadcast quickly. So these are already, I've got a few pre-configured for uh, FM broadcast. So if you click there, you're going to hear KFM radio in Cape Town. And I can just turn the volume up a little bit. Or you can change to say FABC Good Hope FM. It's Broadcast FM. I've got Broadcast AM as well, but I'm not sure if there's anything in this range at the moment that's actually transmitting or what I'm picking up. It could also be my antenna, maybe. So let's have a look at. 2 meter VHF voice. I'm zoomed out at the moment. So if I use the mouse wheel and I just zoom in a little bit, you'll see these are the repeater stations, the VHF repeater stations that I can pick up from my house at the moment. If you are in analog FM receiving, the other thing you have got, as I said just now, is a squelch. So you can turn the volume up and then set the squelch over here at the bottom. There we go, until you just lose the noise in the background. 
Now, if anybody was transmitting, as I said, you'd be able to see here, with the bookmarks, you can already quickly just see that that will be the Constantia Berg transmitter in Cape Town. That will be the Canon Corp transmitter. This is the International Space Station voice frequency that you can receive on. So if the space station is moving over the, the Cape Town area and they're transmitting, I've actually heard them on here. If you were anywhere in the world, you came to my Open Web Rx, when the space station comes over, you could monitor and hear what we're receiving in Cape Town. And this, of course, is the ISS's the space station's packet data receiving frequency, ground frequency. These are other repeaters around Cape Town. The one of interest possibly may be the Botleray Digital, which is, I think, it alternates between D-Star and DMR. So you might have to hear a switch between, it's set, I've set it to D-Star, but you can switch it to DMR uh, and between the two if, if you can't decode the signal properly. There's not much going on, but I think we'll pick up on the digital side now. So if I go to 70 centimeter is UHF, and this I've got for digital, the digital frequency range. Let's just zoom out first of all. There is again packet receiving from the space station. What is of interest here possibly is, is these three digital repeaters. The one is Helderberg DMR, which is out at Somerset West, about 50 kilometers away from me. The other one is Cape Town's DMR. And the third one is Botleray DMR and D-Star over there. You'll see at the moment they are all probably broadcasting on DMR because that is the DMR coming through. So let's have a look, say, for example, at Cape Town, which you'll see is the strongest signal here. You just click over there on the bookmark. And you'll notice now, because it knows that it's DMR digital mode, that bookmark is already preset for that. It is showing us both time slots, time slot one and time slot two. It is coming through on the DMR repeater. Typically, it will be talk group 91, which is the worldwide English talk group. So you'll only see time slot one really filling up most of the time. Being digital, it will show you things like the call sign and maybe one or two other bits of text information that comes through with the signal. Time slot 2 will most of the time be dormant, but it can be fired up by anybody in the area that wants to make use of the repeater. And they could, for example, switch that to any other talk group, 655 or anything else as well that can be of use. The repeater will handle two simultaneous broadcast and receiving of signal. If you find that both are going, there, for example, you can see Brandon with his call sign and the talk group 91 that was active. Obviously, if a person is talking for longer, if they're talking for about 30 seconds, you will see it more clearly. And then what I was saying was you can also switch off one or both time slots. If there's signals on both, you could switch this one off, for example, just by clicking on it. So you'll see call sign, name, and then it also verifies what talk group it is. In this case, like I said, 91 at the moment, worldwide English. So that's the way you could tune in and listen. to you, Skipper. I hope you have a really good morning in New Madrid. This is the Air Force Radio Station. Good morning, Skipper. I think, okay, let me just turn that down now. As I said, you can switch on and off either of the time slots and you can verify the digital information. If it was a D star broadcast, you would get similar digital information. Again, it's decoding for you the digital signal into voice audio and any digital information that's coming through. So this scanner is actually very useful. Many people's radios are only DMR or only D-Star or only analog FM. So by, by tuning into something like this, you've got the benefit of listening to and across a whole bunch of different modes and frequencies. So yeah, those are our three digital repeaters. As I said, Two are DMR only, but the Butler Ray one can alternate between D Star and DMR. It will auto switch, so you might have to switch down here. Okay, so that's that one. Let me just see. Then we've also got a few UHF repeaters, analog repeaters around Cape Town. I don't have many open. 
I think that's my local open spot actually here in the house that I can just monitor if it's transmitting and what's going on. And we've got two other repeaters over there. So if there is something coming through over here, for example, I could zoom in a bit. You can tune in over there. But that may be a digital signal of some form and it's not a DMR specifically. You see, I can click over the various modes here to test and see, you know, what, what is it possibly. Again, we can read out the signal over there and see it's 433.9433 megahertz on the UHF band. I think I've covered all of them actually. Uh, we've done the VHF voice. So that's the APRS again, really. But that really is a sort of it. That's that's what Open Web RX does. Anything else I can just mention is that it can also act as a gateway for APRS. So mine is set up not only to receive the APRS signal, but it's also transmitting this data back to the main APRS website. It's in receive only mode. My SDR doesn't transmit to anything. Um, and you can see there, there's a lot of the data coming through. But anyway, I hope you found this interesting. You know, as I said, even if you're not a ham radio operator, it might be of interest for you to tune in a little bit and um, listen to, to what's actually going on locally in the Cape Town area. And as I said, if you are a ham radio operator and you don't have DMR or a D-Star radio and you just want to hear and listen to what's going on, it's again another way of just tuning in and listening. What some ham radio operators also do is where they are transmitting on some of these frequencies to repeaters or even on simplex they could still log into this service of mine if you're in cape town but you could do something similar if you're in other cities close to the to the receiver and you could monitor your own signal and make sure that your radio is transmitting you can have a look at how much bandwidth you're pushing out how strong the signal is and uh, monitor also the audio and if it's digital you could be picking up and making sure and seeing what other people are actually seeing when they listen to you. So, you know, there's, a, there's a, a multitude of uses really for something like this Open Web RX. So, like I said, I hope you found that of some interest and enjoy it. I'll put the link to my one below as well as to the main website where you can look for the other Open Web RX receivers in that receiver book page. And maybe you'll find a couple nearby you or in, in a city that you're interested in and you can tune in to and listen to the local ham and other traffic going on. So that's it. Hope you guys all enjoy your day further and I'll catch you in my next video.